All right, put on a little jacket for y'all. You know, I'm trying to look professional. Hey. <laughs> episode one of this five-part series journeying how we purchased this condo to design a heat space and i'm very excited about that part <laughs> but i wanted to kind of you know take you guys back to what it looked like over the last year what it took to get here and a lot of you guys were asking when we posted the closing day photo and i just wanted to take some time out to give you step-by-step -step process of buying a condo here in brooklyn and for those of you that are new here my name is oyan entry welcome to the series <music> All right, so I wrote some notes down for me and for you <laughs> to help better guide this. All right, so step one, what to purchase and how much home can we afford? All right, so one of the questions Jeff and I had to ask ourselves in 2021 was why we wanted to purchase. Um, one of the primary reasons being the rent in New York City was just going up and up. At that point, we're paying $3,500 for one bedroom. And so we had to ask ourselves, is there a mortgage around $3,500? Is there a way we can even go lower? And the answer was yes. So we wanted to take that chance to start looking for something that would help us make sense of our money. Uh, one of the questions we had to ask ourselves was, what do we want to purchase? Do we want to purchase a co-op, a condo, a single family home, multifamily home? And was this going to be a long-term residency or a secondary one? Were we going to move? So we decided we were going to stay. <laughs> we love us in Brooklyn. Um, but we wanted this primary residence to be something that made sense for us financially. And so after really assessing our finances, and I'm going to talk about some tools that helped us to do so, we decided that the condo was the best way to go. Reason being, a co-op sounded good at first, right? The thing with co-ops are that they are it's not true real estate. It's buying a share into a building. So we knew if we ever wanted to rent this in the future, it would be really difficult. We would have to speak to a board. Some co-ops don't even allow you to rent. And so knowing that we wanted a primary residence and we wanted to be rentable in the future, a condo made the most sense. A single family home and a multifamily home just really wasn't in our price range. Anyone who lives in New York City or anything knows those are upwards of $2 million or higher, and your mortgage would be anywhere from 10 to 12,000. So we were like, you know what, let's kind of stick with a condo in our price range, and that allow us to own true real estate and be able to use it as rental income in the future. All right, so now that we knew what we wanted to purchase, we had to ask ourselves, when did we want to purchase? Um, 2021, as things were kind of pulling away from the pandemic, we knew that rent was just going to get higher and higher so um, we wanted to purchase as soon as possible at that point we realized this the best way to guide us and to have that right hand with us through this process was to get an agent an agent especially in new york city <laughs> real estate absolutely critical thankfully my friend family and uh, real estate agent janet um, i'm going to link all her information below she was able to really help us through this process and help us really understand new york city real estate market and honestly battled against it <laughs> it was like war and i'm going to get into that a little bit but what Janet helped us do was give us a home buyer's guide. So that allowed us to really understand, okay, what was it like to purchase in New York right now? She helped us to really identify where were we financially, right? How much home could we really afford? What could we put down as a down payment? And she helped us do this using something called a REBNY statement. The REBNY statement was a way for us to enter our debts, liabilities, our assets, and really see, okay, what did we have left to purchase? In addition to assessing where we were financially, we also had to see where we were in terms of credit. One of the apps that was critical to this is the FICO app. Forget Credit Karma, forget Experian. We learned through lenders that the FICO app is really what they're using. The FICO app assesses your three mortgage scores, Experian, Equifax, or TransUnion, and they literally take the middle mortgage score. So you know exactly what they're seeing. So instead of having lenders run your credit constantly before finding out if you really could afford the right um, program, the right mortgage, download the FICO app. It tells you everything you need to know and you yourself would know what mortgage score you're going in with. Now, in terms of what to bring to the table in New York City, I come from Maryland and I have family across major cities. A lot of other major cities allow for, you know, um, 10%, maybe even less in terms of down payment. Here in New York City, it's really best to bring 20% to the table. And so that was something also that our agent was able to remind us of. So. Say you want to purchase something that's $500,000. New York City usually wants at least 20% down, so you know, okay, that's about $100,000, all right? 
we know that condos are anywhere from 2% to 4% closing costs. You want to prepare for the worst. So let's say 4%, that's about $20,000. So you know that you need about $120,000 showing in an account to purchase a $500,000 condo. Now, also want to keep in mind a buffer, obviously, right? You may want to do some renovations when you close and things like that. So that's something to keep in mind. And these are the types of conversations we were having when we were saving up financially. We knew where we were. We knew we needed to bring 20% to the table. Mortgage score, credit score, we knew where we were. We had the FICO app. And then third, okay, the rates are going up. <laughs> so y'all remember 2021, 2022, and even now to this day in 2023, the rates are crazy. They're skyrocketing, right? And so there was a true affordability calculator using Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. Um, that was also something that was very helpful. We went on that website. We put in how much we had for down payment. We put in our monthly um, expenses. We put in our credit score and we were able to see what we could truly afford with the current rate. All right, so step number two, pre-approval and how much home can we really afford? Meaning now we were gonna start to speak to lenders and banks and really start to get the process going. Now, something unique that we did was six months before we started to approach lenders, we made sure to put all of our finances in one so that we had enough of a bank statement to show lenders. But we also started paying our rent on credit, which we did that earlier, by the way. Um, not only because of points, <laughs> but what that did was it took our rent off of our financial statement. So technically, if you looked at our debt, you were not seeing that $3,500 rent. So it looked like we had very low debt. A lot of mortgage bankers actually agree that that's the best way to do it. So that's something to think about. Also, working with banks, it was critical that we worked with different banks and different lenders at the same time. So because they're gonna run your credit and affect your credit score, we decided to use um, the benefit of the 45 day window. So if you don't know what that is, that means if you're getting multiple lenders to hit your credit all within 45 days, it's only gonna look like one single hit. And so we worked with big banks like Bank of America, mid-range banks like Cross Country Mortgage, and even like Rocket Mortgage, which is more of like a tech focused um, smaller lender and so we worked with them all at the same time that was critical also we started to look on the New York City government website to see if there were programs for assisting closing costs assisting down payments and Janet our agent also provided us with the preferred lender list that means these are the banks and the lenders that are doing different things to assist you in purchasing um, that can help with providing support during the process financially and also the ones that have the better rates and better deals for your financial profile. So that was also very helpful. All right, so while these assistance programs sounded really good, one thing that we learned the hard way that you just wanna make sure that you're careful with is making sure that the assistance programs are best for you, like they fit you and they fit the building because that happened to us where um, a Closing cost assistance program sounded so good and it fit us so well and we fit all the requirements. However, the condo we wanted to get did not fit the requirements. And so at the end of the day, it didn't really matter. So just keep that in mind in the process. After we went through each of the lenders and assessed the different rates and the different options that they were giving us, we decided being tech founders ourselves, <laughs> we decided on Rocket Mortgage. Honestly, the Rocket Mortgage app was just popping. It was very straightforward. It was easy to see where we were step by step throughout. And honestly, Rocket Money, a different app that they have, has been helping us with financial planning anyway. So it just made sense that we would stick with that Rocket Mortgage family. That's us personally. It was very helpful, very transparent, and they were just really easy to work with. Also, something that we wanted to keep in mind as we were working with lenders is getting the pre-approval letter, right? The pre-approval letter was what we needed to take when we were searching for homes. We took those letters and we went to shopping, the fun part. <laughs> search for a home now in terms of the search you really want your agent to book the viewings for you it's just a lot easier it was also nice to consolidate them in the same area in the same neighborhood um, good time frame and also um, your agent may have a little bit of a heads up in terms of off-market units that maybe you're not finding online and things like that so in our case we used street easy which is new york city's like best search engine when it comes to like renting or purchasing so we use street easy to kind of find things that we're interested in while our agent was looking like on off market, um, you know, the agent um, website and the directory to be able to find things that maybe we were not seeing. So it was kind of a tag team. So we looked in different ranges. So we said, okay, we want a condo. Do we want to do the campus style condo? What I mean is like big building, you know, with all of these amenities, do we want to do that? Or 
Do we want to look for like small coins boutique building with just a few condos? Do we want to do something kind of in the middle that's like mid-rise? And so we gave ourselves that range. So we decided on Queens, right? Queens Central Brooklyn. We really wanted something in a black historical neighborhood. So that meant, you know, neighborhoods like Bed-Stuy, Clinton Hill, Stuyvesant Heights, Prospect Leffitt's Garden, those types of areas were where we were looking. And we wanted something very quintessential, you know, brownstone blocks, something really small. And so that was where our focus was, but we definitely had some fun shopping around. Step four, negotiating the deal and getting in contracts. All right, so after each viewing, Jeff and I did like a pros and cons list. What that helped us do was really ask ourselves, okay, what did we like? What did we not like? What were we willing to like give up? That narrowed us down to one particular building that we loved. Um, now, it was time to put in our offer. <laughs> it's very nerve wracking because one of the things we experienced many times last year is getting outbid because there's a lot of cash buyers in New York City and a lot of foreign you know buyers coming in um some people with stronger financial profiles so you really don't want to fight this fight by yourself this is where our agent was very helpful Janet helps us to create a deal sheet where we put what we wanted in a deal and submitted that to the seller and we went back and forth you know it's not like tv right a million dollar listing you see like the deal gets locked in and yay but it wasn't like that for us it was a back and forth for weeks until we finally got to the right deal um and then eventually with this particular unit um thankfully we were able to get the deal approved that was a very exciting day and then now it was time to really get in contract and what that means is we had to put something down so part of our down payment to lock it in that's when janet introduced us to mahal our um, real estate attorney she is a you know powerhouse she really helps us to be able to get through the contract make sure we're reading every line and we're redefining things on our terms or that's best for us and make sure that before we sign and we put money down that we were protected the whole way love me some mahal i'm gonna link her information below as well all right so when everything was clear with the contract and we agreed on the terms the seller agreed on the terms we signed and we had to put in a down payment that day y'all <laughs> when i went to the bank we both were looking at each other like, here we go, because once that money is down, the contract is signed, you are locked in. It was both exciting and very nerve wracking, but I actually remember that day being so significant. I was just like, Lord Jesus. <laughs> All right, so that weird, awkward gap between when you're in contract and when you close is really just about locking in a rate because the rates are fluctuating every single day. So at this point, it was working with Rocket Mortgage and working with our mortgage banker to lock in a rate, like let's pick one and let's lock that in. It was also just about credit monitoring and account monitoring. They were watching your credit score. So keeping our credit balances at zero, making sure that you don't have any balances, not opening new credit lines, not closing any line, and making sure that financially you're right at where you were when they gave you that pre-approval letter, that was critical. So this is when we were just confirming all the information that Rocket Mortgage needed, and then eventually locking in a closing date. That was an interesting experience because it required a lot of scheduling and this is where also our attorney was very helpful. So Mahal allowed us to find the best day for us, the lender, Rocket Mortgage, the seller, and the seller's you know team. So it was a lot of coordination, but eventually we all landed on a date, a time, and a location to be able to close. All right, it's closing day. Oh my God, we were so excited. Now, before excitement was nervous because we had to get everything ready. So if you remember, closing calls could be anywhere from two to 4%. And we didn't know the number until 30 minutes before closing. It was so scary, but we had to bring checks for the balance of the down payment, closing costs, which came up to exactly 4% because of course we would have the higher <laughs> version of that. So we were prepping all of that the weekend before closing. But also we got to do a final walkthrough. Anything we wanted the seller to fix, they had to either have it fixed before closing day or you know, have a, you know, a signed document saying that they would fix it. And so the weekend leading up to closing was all about finalizing the finances and making sure that the final walkthrough of the condo things look good and anything we had asked to be fixed uh, was either fixed already or about to be fixed within, you know, that week range after closing. All right, so we happened to close at our attorney's Fifth Avenue location, which made it so special, right? It was just like this quintessential New York Avenue, and it's just like we're closing on a condo. We did that. We made it. You know, a year and a half later, all the financial commitments, all the stress, all the tears, getting out bid, getting in contract, all the money in the checks, we finally made it. So it was such an exciting day. Um, our agent met us a little bit 
uh, like an hour or so into closing and she brought gifts which is so exciting thank you again janet um and also some champagne so it was really nice to be able to just celebrate the wind right and make sure to celebrate yourself because i think a lot of times you know it just seems like a thing to do like you know adulting is purchasing your home no it's a big deal you did that celebrate all that you did to get here and we did that it was such a fun day um after closing at the office we drove back to the condo and came upstairs got the keys and time to design <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning into episode one. Um, I know it was a lot of information, but I hope this step-by-step -step process really allowed you to digest it and know how to approach this. If you're looking to purchase in New York City, know someone that wants to purchase or is just interested in how we got here. The next few episodes is gonna be bringing each space to life. I think you can see behind me, we zone a little something, something. So I hope you guys are excited about that. So any questions that you have, please drop them below.